This is a special presentation from Brighton High School. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will get started. I'm Kevin McGowan, the superintendent of the Brighton Schools. I'm so glad that you could join us tonight for this virtual town hall with Brighton High School. We have on the screen, I hope I don't leave anybody out, our principal, Dr. Tom Hall, assistant principals, Betsy Balling, Matt Como, Teresa Mosher, the indomitable spirit of Mike Struzik on the screen as well, BHS band teacher and uh, music facilitator, teacher extraordinaire, Dr. Debbie Baker, our assistant superintendent, curriculum instruction, Deanna Spagnola, our director of student support services, Mark Kakanovich, our board president, I noticed is on as well. And I hope I didn't miss anybody, but I know we'll have others join us throughout the evening. Really glad that all of you could join us, more important than who's here from the district. Glad that you could be uh, with us uh, this evening to share some feedback and, and help us understand how things are going for you and where we can improve. I'm going to share my screen with some comments uh, from the Thought Exchange, starting with the remote, I'm sorry, with the hybrid group, uh, but would ask as I do that, Dr. Hall, can you start us off? Just give a general idea of your impression so far of how things have started, what you're seeing as great things, some things that you think the building is working on, just your overall assessment as I go to share my screen. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Dr. McGowan. And just want to uh, welcome Marion Jordan, Jackie Liebman, and Robin Samper, who are also on, who are PTSA co-chairs or tri-chairs, I guess, this year. Um, helping me out a lot and giving me a lot of good feedback uh, from the parent community, too. So I would say our overall opening, I mean, we're, we're here, we're just about ready to finish up two months of school. Um, we're ending the first quarter. Uh, we have about two weeks left, just the first two weeks of November, and we'll wrap up quarter one. Overall, I mean, we certainly had our, our ups and downs, but overall, I would say we're doing very well. Um, I, I read through every single comment through the thought exchange as well, and I'm, you know, hopefully you'll be able to provide some answers to some of those things today or tonight. And uh, a lot of great questions on Tuesday from the parents who jumped on, uh, some similar comments and feelings uh, uh, that are in the thought exchange as well, and some additional ones about sports and clubs and activities and other things that are part of school life that uh, we haven't talked a whole lot about uh, since a lot of that has been um, something we're not involved in right now. Um, but. We are certainly aware that there's uh, been some concerns and we are aware of that too with Schoology and school tool and grade reporting. You know, we, I, I don't know, I guess I'll just start out with, when it comes to the grades being posted from teachers, um, last year and the year before that, and the year before that, I think it's been maybe four years now that we've mandated teachers to post grades to school tool. Everybody posts their grades every two to three weeks in school tool. Well, this past summer, because of the spring and the closure, every single teacher now is using Schoology, uh, which is our uh, learning management system that actually houses all sorts of information um, and becomes, it's like the, you know, the old traditional websites that a teacher might have, but even more powerful. And, you know, we were going under the impression this summer, after so many people are now using it, that our grades from Schoology would automatically transfer to school tool. And I talked about this with the parents on Tuesday. Um, that was a huge hope for mostly the middle and high school, that if a teacher put it, their grades in Schoology, Every night, midnight, let's say, the grades would automatically upload to school tool, so they would automatically be the same um, whether you went to Schoology or you went to school tool. Unfortunately, uh, those two companies are not uh, communicating um, through plenty of efforts uh, from the tech folks in the district, and that is not going to happen anytime soon. So there were teachers who started out with Schoology, were not putting their grades in school tool, and I'll own that. Um, and now we're at a point where uh, they're not going to communicate, the grades aren't gonna upload. So we've asked teachers to at least put in minimally their uh, running average that might be in Schoology, if they're using Schoology primarily, and put that in school tool. And you know, I just know that's a big frustration for parents out there to try to keep up with your kids and not going to multiple systems again. So we are working on it, and I hope to have some additional answers as we start quarter two, but please know that that is something we're aware of. Great. 
Thanks, Dr. Hall. So we'll go through a few of the comments here. Just want to uh, jump into them. The first is we asked that teachers remind and enforce mask wearing during in-person days. A mask break should not take more than five minutes in a well-vented room and when kids are more than six feet apart. I constantly hear things are looser in the school on those days and it's very concerning. So I'll speak to this and then ask um, any of the BHS folks to jump in. Uh, there's very few mask breaks happening We've designed it that way. Um, we could not agree more with this comment, and I'm glad this person's pointing it out. It helps remind us to remind people as well. There were a couple of comments also about kids starting to become a little bit more lax with that, a uh, little bit of an um, idea that people have kind of fallen into a little bit of a lull because things have gone really, really well, and so we want to make sure that we stay vigilant. This is so, so important. We have done well. People have been very healthy, uh, relatively speaking, and, and we're in a good spot that way, but we don't want to let our guard down and have that change. We feel good about what's happened. We feel good about how people have been approaching it, but this is a good reminder to that, and uh, we're certainly not encouraging mask breaks at all. There is a, you know, a sliver of a window open for that opportunity, but for the most part, we're not seeing that happen other than when kids are certainly six feet apart and uh, generally during the times when they're eating. And uh, that's in larger spaces as well. Any of the BHS people want to weigh in on that? Well, I'll just say that, you know, from the summer, right, right from the summer when we were starting to develop policies, I encouraged faculty. I said, if I were you as a faculty member, um, I would not give mass breaks in class. And for the vast majority of faculty, I think that is true right now. Um, and I did hear a couple faculty who were giving mass breaks, you know, and our policy or the district's policy is that if there is a mass break in a class, it isn't more than five minutes and there's no activity going on in the room. Nobody's talking, nobody's um, having a conversation or working together. They're silently doing either reading or their own independent work. That includes the teacher. There's no lecturing or talking going on during the time when masks are off. However, I think after that one positive COVID test that we had, um, that caused a few of those teachers who were giving mass breaks to stop doing that. And any kid who maybe is uh, struggling with their mask in a class or needs a drink, what we've encouraged teachers to do, and I've seen it myself walking through, is that they just have to get up, walk into the hallway. Uh, is In the hallways are a place where we don't allow mass, uh, people walking around without their masks. So between classes, there's nobody in the halls right now. So if they need to step out, take a quick break, take a drink, then go back in the classroom, that seems to be working. So no kid should be sitting through 45 minutes if they just can't or they're having an issue with it. They should be able to get up, go into the hallway, and then go back. And that's been my recommendation from the get-go that we would not be providing mass breaks, um, you know, in general for kids in classrooms. So, um, and I think after the one positive case that, that um was taken care of by several other, a few teachers who might be doing that. And really we've told the kids, the gym, the cafeteria are going outside um, or in our small 262 room. Those are the, really the only areas to get a, a mass break. Great, thank you. Second comment I'd like to address, assistant principal should answer emails, need answers. And it ranked number two, start 4.2. I'd say probably start multiple times by the assistant principals themselves could they, because they would agree with you that they uh, should answer emails. I will tell you that they are a very responsive group. We try really hard in these conversations to not at all come across as defensive because we're really asking for this feedback. So this is good. It's a good reminder for all of us, myself included. I will say to you that one of the difficulties we all have is using these current platforms. Obviously, email is not a brand new platform to any of us. The volume is, though. And so when you're talking about 150, 200 emails a day to many of, of our inboxes, it's very difficult while you're trying to spend time with kids while they are in school. And the compounding factor for us now is because kids are only in school with us half the time, the need to spend time directly with a child um, is there and they're only there half the time. So trying to catch up with kids who then won't be there the next day uh, presents a challenge. And so being able to meet one-on-one -on -one with kids and spend that kind of time is a priority. And uh, email and those kinds of responses do get answered. They just might not be getting answered as quickly as people are looking for from myself, from Dr. Hall, from any assistant principal, from any administrator, uh, because this is the, the situation we're in right now. We're really trying to focus on who's in front of us at that moment. 
Point well taken, though, it is awfully important. I just wanted people to know that the group is very responsive and, uh, you know, certainly people agreed that they should answer them. I, our assistant principals would too. Grades on School Tool and Schoology are different. Which one is correct? I know Dr. Hall has just addressed uh, uh, this comment too, but could you just make sure you clarify that in, uh, you know, 10 seconds or less? Which one is correct? Well, that's the part of the conundrum. It depends on the teacher and which system they're using primarily because they might put a running average in the school tool, but they use Schoology a lot. So the running average could be wrong after two days um, and Schoology could be correct. Um, and then there are teachers who don't use Schoology grade book at all and only use school tool. So I hear the frustration and that's something I think we need to talk about 612 moving forward. Great. A common answer to parent concerns on this medium in general, reach out to teachers. Many times it's really a job for admins to monitor. Us parents are already having to be teachers. We're stretched too thin to be teacher supervisors due to poorly designed leadership practices. Couldn't agree more. I would say though that could possibly be a misperception in terms of how leadership practices are designed. I think the point is when this comes up that sometimes when you're having a difficulty, it's helpful organizationally to first go to the person you're having difficulty with because often we find that problems are solved when something is simply clarified. What we'd say, though, is not a, uh, an elimination of including us. In fact, we'd say include us in that conversation, and we're happy to participate in that as well. And frankly, if you don't find satisfaction in the response, we definitely need to know that. Um, I, I would ask Dr. Hall to speak to you know, the efforts to supervise, to evaluate, to ensure accountability, to provide for excellence. And I would just say in general, you're not wrong in this comment. We would agree with you. It is our job to do that. And we do uh, do quite a bit of that. As a matter of fact, I ask our administrators all the time about their visits to Zooms, their evaluation of the independent day work and their visits to classrooms. So it is happening and people do have a very good handle on what's happening in the classroom. Um, these are a little bit of two different things at the same time. Dr. Hall, you wanna to talk to us a little bit about um, kind of that in, ensuring excellence and the kinds of things that you're all doing as administrators to look in on what's happening and to provide support and coaching? Sure. Um, well, just to let you know that all the assistant principals and myself uh, are in classrooms on a daily basis. We all supervise certain teachers and then we are communicating with teachers almost on a daily basis. And when it comes to even the remote Class days on Wednesdays, uh, every Wednesday, we've been checking in on a few teachers each Wednesday as we've been in between our own meetings um, and just observing and seeing how things are going. And we have had, uh, you know, over the course of two months for uh, a few teachers, we've had a lot of, you know, productive conversations and provided feedback, especially those uh, faculty that might be a little bit less tech savvy. Um, and trying to get them up to speed with Schoology and giving them some pointers. And um, we ourselves uh, learned a lot about Schoology this year and sharing some of that or putting them in the right direction to get that professional development so that they can become better um, and organized. Because truly right now, I mean, the, the management of a teacher's week is completely... Uh, um, it's so different from a regular school year because of the students, the drop days that we have, kids coming in um, every other day. And then for sometimes when we have a Monday or a Friday off and every class is at a different place. So instead of five classes, sometimes it's like teaching eight, nine or 10 different classes because they're all in different places. Um, and what you might do one day in the classroom could be a, uh, a remote asynchronous assignment uh, for another class at home. And then they're doing something different when they come into the classroom. So there's a lot of different planning and things that are going on and we're just, we're there to support them um, and, you know, work with parents if there are struggles and you haven't been able to communicate with a teacher to have something resolved then certainly contact us. And I, I was completely surprised by the second comment rated with the AP communication. I, I was surprised at that. I would pride us all, and, and I know they work very hard on getting back to parents, so. Yep. Uh, you know, just want to encourage people as we go through this, keep adding comments to the chat, and uh, we'll hit those next, and then we'll finish up with Facebook comments. And we won't just do the chat, but also open it up to anybody who'd like to uh, share on the screen and unmute themselves. We're happy to do that, too. We'll hit a couple more of these and then go to the remote comments and then move on from there. Um, Late assignments, flexibility around late assignments, flexibility with kids who 
can't come to school, they're required to stay home for a variety of reasons due to symptoms or either quarantine, whatever it may be. What What is the general feeling around that kind of flexibility right now in this current situation? Well, I think the, I mean, the same rules apply. If, if a student's ill, like if they're legitimately ill and they're not in school, um, just because we have Schoology and email and school tool doesn't mean that the the due date should remain exactly the same. If the student's ill and can't perform or if there's some other issue, um, certainly the protocols that we have in place of giving students extra time to turn in those assignments would also be in play. Um, for the students who are quarantining for multiple days or 14 days potentially, uh, Schoology has helped a lot because there are things that kids can pull off, handouts and things that you would never be able to get because you weren't in the classroom, but now it's on Schoology, you can. However, um, not every kid can you know, learn all of that material independently. So if they have a concern, please have them email their teachers. Um, and if they don't get some sort of resolution or feel that they're being treated fairly under the circumstances, I mean, we're still in a pandemic, tell that to faculty, you know, that we are in a pandemic and pandemic and the majority of them understand that. And as long as the kids communicating with them, um, they'll, they'll work with them and certainly allow for some extra time. However, we, we also want to make sure that this isn't the spring where we had really not a lot of communication methods available. Um, and we kind of got thrown into it all of a sudden that there are ways of submitting assignments or working with teachers in a much different fashion. So we also want to hold, you know, students accountable in a way too, but there's a balance to, there's a balance to, to find there. Thanks a lot, Dr. Hall. Um, I'm going to toggle my screen to the remote, but while I do that, I'd like to ask you about this very important comment here around best days, I'm sorry, around the patio heaters. Any chance for patio heaters so that some brave souls could perhaps eat outside? Is that something that you're thinking about at all? <laughs> Mr. Como will put on his winter coat and gloves and hat and be outside all the way through February, March, whatever you want, as long as there's kids who are willing to go outside. Um, but we do not have any availability to put up portable heaters, um, schools um, in terms of putting up some sort of propane heaters and things like that. Certainly our insurance would not cover such a thing. Um, and for tents, you know, we've talked a lot about tents. Um, Dr. McGowan might address that, but putting up the size of tent and for the length of time we would put up a tent um, actually gets into a whole state ed uh, conundrum with um, having an, an, a different structure put onto the premises and it would have to be approved by state ed. Um, so tents and heaters, we, we just haven't done. We are opening the lower gym and room 262 for students to at least go to during flex um, or free periods. I'm sorry, flex mainly. Um, so that's what we're doing as the winter is coming to us. Thanks very much. Winter is coming. I worry a bit about my daughter feeling disconnected from friends and school activities, this person writes. For instance, she had no idea about the t-shirts available for homecoming. So what I'm wondering if you can address um, any one of you, and I know Teresa Mosher's on here too, works a lot with our kids and student activities. You know, this idea that one, clubs and activities are gonna start up next week, which I think is a really good thing and people are feeling disconnected and address how that affects remote folks. And just the efforts that have been made by kids so far, but uh, perhaps what we're thinking about going forward in terms of how we can keep engaging kids differently. Any one of you? Sure. So um, we just finished Spirit Week. Um, in regards to the t-shirts, they are still on sale. They actually just went on sale. They're online. Um, they're on sale through November 6th. And we just did a whole new blitz trying to advertise that as well, along with exec council. Exec Council is um, continuing to put uh, together student activities uh, throughout the year virtually, not just for this homecoming week. Our main goal is to bring the school together, not just as classes, 9, 10, 11, 12, but as a school community, because we recognize it's very difficult uh, during this pandemic. And then um, Dr. McGowan, as you mentioned, we're in the process of starting up some, uh, some clubs we should know by um, Friday, Monday at the latest, and then we will start to advertise those as well. The advisors will be reaching out and then all students are welcome, both hybrid and remote. They will Zoom students into those club meetings to help students get more connected. Great. And 
And I'll just quickly say that the we've asked all of the hybrid students, the students who are in this building, that you know they put up posters and things like that, but everything goes out via student email as well. So you don't have to have a child who's got face, um, not face chat, Snapchat or Facebook or any of the you know other social media platforms. They just have to check their school email and all of those details are in their school email. And there's actually a remote um, game that was played. We had almost 55 kids or whatever that showed up to play this game through homecoming and it could have been remote or hybrid students. So uh, still trying to keep them involved and, you know, but check the email for sure. It's good to know your MySpace page is up and running, Dr. Hall. So <laughs> thank you very much for that. Uh, much, yeah. uh, you know, a couple other uh, comments here, a lot of comments. We appreciate that. Just a quick editorial note for people. We go through every single comment every single one and every one of these exchanges. So even though we pick out the highlights and we start to talk about what they mean and we kind of generally thematically group these, we read every single one of them. So where there are suggestions here as well and other constructive feedback, it is also being addressed and thought through in school. So we, we do appreciate that. But for the sake of a conversation uh, that is efficient in the time frame we have, that's, that's why we go through them this way. There was in the last exchange, and I got off that page before pointing these out, but I do want to mention them. You know, one comment about best days being the in-person days, how can we maximize those? And there have been a couple of comments, and we had a, a session earlier with Council Rock parents, so it's interesting to see both ends of the spectrum here, with people asking, you know, can't we get back in school more often? Wouldn't it be great if we could? And I, and I would say this to you, unless something changes with public health guidance, which would not be anticipated at all at this point, it's going really well doing what we're doing, and we don't want to jeopardize that. It's so important to keep other people healthy by sticking to what we are doing. So we don't anticipate those being any changes. We, we really have done this in a way that maximized the time that we could have kids in school and still remain safe. And so space-wise, we don't have other larger spaces. As you can hear in Dr. Hall describing the, the heater idea and what we are doing to bring people inside and what that's going to look like, we're really maxing out in terms of the space that we have available and the number of kids we can have in the building. And then there's the resource of having enough adults to supervise those kids if they're put into smaller groups and moved around the building differently. So in our planning K through 12, that's really what it boiled down to is how can we do this as safe as we possibly can with the space we have available and the resources we have available to us and we landed at this place. At this point, we don't see that changing unless something obviously significantly changes with regard to the pandemic. Um, and, and we'll continue to move along this route. There has been some question about, well, what about Wednesdays? Is there a way then to rotate kids coming in on that Wednesday, one of the, the two groups? We will continue to keep an open mind to those things and take a look at it. However, there's no plan right now to do that. Wednesday still is an opportunity for us to clean, and I hate to say deep clean because, frankly, we're cleaning deeply every day, but to do more cleaning on that day, also for the whole group to be able to connect um, in that remote environment, which may be helpful should we come back at some point. It also helps keep both kids and our staff members working in that remote space in a way that helps us grow and learn and adapt to that space should we need to go all remote. It's almost like training once a week for what might happen. Not reading any tea leaves, I don't have any inside information. We're in a really good spot right now, but depending on the path of the pandemic, which is unpredictable to some degree, um, and what happens around the holiday season and where people are at in terms of their gatherings and the need for maybe many people to quarantine as college kids come home and things come up. Um, we've seen schools across the state have, have to transition very quickly to remote environments. We feel like we're really well positioned to do that, but we want to make sure we're well prepared and continuing to grow in that way. So just a couple of thoughts around that that I wanted to share with you. Great comment here, the extra hour of sleep on Wednesday. We're glad that that has worked that way. A suggestion here around uh, the reminders that could be provided. This is in the all remote space around different tools that are available. I'm sure we'll keep growing in that way. This is an interesting comment for me, and I'm wondering actually if any of our high school people can comment on this. Our students developing more independence and responsibility with remote learning. This is a comment that I've heard actually from several people. And I'm just interested, this is more of a philosophical question around your take on this idea that I wonder what skill sets our kids are developing that we hadn't thought as much about before. You know, in terms of grit, in terms of perseverance, in terms of resilience, nobody would choose to be in a pandemic. But if we walk away with this, thinking differently about some of the skill development that might be happening, I wonder how well we are positioning our kids to look at their work and look at their situation and circumstances a little bit differently as they get older. Any thoughts on that from the high school educators? 
I would say that, you know, part of it, um, it, they have to take the initiative to reach out to the teacher in addition to just attending the classes because they don't necessarily have the opportunity to have face to face. And so there's some independence there with advocating, reaching out in addition to attending the class. And then I would say organizing themselves, you know, with their schedule as well and organizing their ability to log into Schoology, find the work and um, you know, follow through with completion and submission as well. Some feedback here from people, thank you, on uh, isolation and needing to uh, connect, which is some good feedback for us also, one-on-one -on -one check ins uh, something we can really think about and share with our mental health support staff as well. Um, a comment here about ban and lessons, expectations, face-to-face -face contact, et cetera. I'm really glad Mike Struzik is on here. I hate to put you on the, on the spot, uh, Struz, but would you mind sharing with us any thoughts about the band lessons and how that's being looked at, et cetera? Um, I'm happy to. We, we've we basically revamped the entire program this year. Um, the state guidance says that we need, if we are going to play in school, we need to be 12 feet apart with masks on and all of the bells covered and all of the instruments in bags if we're playing because of the aerosols that are coming off of the uh, of the instruments. So um, without the auditorium in play, the largest room we have would hold five people, including the teacher. Um, so we revamped the entire program to be um, a virtual and I feel pretty robust program that is ever evolving, where we keep coming up with new ideas. Um, I sat in a webinar last night and introduced a new um, app to the kids today. Um, so we, we keep trying to do things, but we are really reinventing the wheel and Kevin, I know I've heard you say this before, we're, we're building the plane as it's leaving the hangar. Um, and that's what we're, we've all been doing. So um, I'm sorry if your child is not happy with the program as it is right now, but I would just encourage them to stay, stay with it because things are gonna get better and better as the year goes on. So I'd probably extend this metaphor and say that uh, perhaps we are fixing the flaps now midair and uh, one point that I'd like to really emphasize with people is that, you know, in the last several months, we've seen more innovation and change than our work has probably seen in the last century. Our work looks very similar relative to structure as it did decades ago. And over the last several months, everything has been changed and done differently. And so I, I do want to compliment our staff in terms of how hard they've worked to make that happen. What Mr. Struzik just pointed out in terms of introducing an app and then using it today and this kind of rethinking of everything, I think is a great example of what you're seeing across our system in terms of people thinking very differently about the work, how to accomplish um, the same objectives and the same level of excellence in a very, very different environment and being understanding of what people are experiencing at home while experiencing it themselves. And we recognize that this is continuing to be a work in progress. We're not a finished product, uh, but I think the work is at a very high level right now and only continues to grow by the day um, and improve. So again, the feedback is, is great. And as I launch those compliments, I don't mean to say though that we feel like we're finished or that or there, there aren't things for us to continue to work on. Um, that's why we're having these sessions and asking these questions. But a lot of really, really good work happening too and want to compliment our, our staff on that as well. I'm going to stop the share on uh, this so that we give space for the other ways to communicate with you and just ask now if we take a look um, at the chat and any questions that uh, might be there and ask people to jump in. And then I'll ask you if you want to unmute in a moment as well. Use of lockers, Eleanor's asking, how do they go about doing that? Dr. Hall, could you answer that or any of you? Sure. Uh, we sent out an email communication maybe three weeks ago, letting kids know that because the colder weather was coming, that uh, we set up maybe a week, um, gave them a week's notice and told them, I think it was on the 22nd, they could start coming down to the main office and requesting a locker. And any student that comes down now and requests a locker, we will give them a locker. So they've been coming in. I don't know. We've probably given out 25, 30 lockers um, since last Thursday. So all students have to do is come to the office and we will assign them a locker. Great, thank you. I see also somebody asking who would they speak to regarding their kids being marked absent when they are not. So uh, you could send an email to 
um, me or any, any of these uh, assistant principals, uh, but we're working closely with the attendance office to get those changed. I probably, I probably get four or five a week, and I'm sure the assistant principals get similar emails a week. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, a lot of wheels turning when it comes to the attendance uh, process this year. So um, we're trying to fix those as soon as we hear about them. But um, just send us a quick note and we'll get it taken care of. Tom, this is Debbie. Is it possible for them to contact the attendance office directly? I know that we have also asked, you know, if they feel like um, they're receiving an email. And this is really for our hybrid kids who are expected to go into school tool and check in, um, you know, at some point in time during the day. But we're also sending out an email post, you know, the day following saying your child didn't check in. Please contact the attendance office to correct that. I'm just trying to think about trying to take some of the emails off of yours and uh, uh, your AP's plates, but anyway, just thinking about that, would you want them to call the attendance office? Tom, I can jump in here. That We do have a lot of people contacting the attendance office, and that's great. They can handle it right there, but if it's easier to contact us, that works too. And mostly lately, it has been kids who forget to check in on school tool on their day at home. And it's not a big deal. Parent just tells us they were working and we take care of it. So, it was, sorry, it was my question. Um, my kids are hybrid. They're there Monday, Thursday. They've gotten marked absent for certain classes on Friday when they're not the day, but just for a specific class when they've been marked there on the day. And then I guess I don't understand Wednesdays when they, um, like my one daughter had an has an academic study hall first period. She doesn't know what she's supposed to do. How does she sign in on a Wednesday? Like today she would have, if she had been at school, she had an academic study hall to so I don't know if she's going to get marked absent for today. And then the other time it happened, she had um, the first period teacher was out or something. They had there was a problem with um, Schoology and they weren't um, it wasn't working that morning. So the first period teacher said, forget it, we won't meet today. But then she got marked absent for the whole day because she didn't have first period. So those are the kinds of things I was going to try to get corrected. Are those better to deal with you or to deal with the attendance office? Really, either way, feel free to, to uh, give me a call or send me an email. Um, the first period academic study hall is, is really there this year because we don't have homeroom. Uh, we were trying to minimize the number of moves that the kids had to make during the day. So students who are free first period are assigned to an academic study hall. And most of them have, the, have signed the delayed arrival form. So most of the students who have that are not coming in for first period anyway. They won't be marked absent from that study hall on a Wednesday. And then if they have been marked absent accidentally in a class on a Tuesday or a Friday, um, that's easy to clear up as well. Just just give me a call or an email. We'll take care of it. I'll, I'll send you an email. Great. I would just say in general, Mara, I, I hear frustration in your voice, and I'm sorry. Uh, but I would also say as a dad, I should probably never share my own kid stuff. But the administrators are going to start to chuckle, but I can totally relate to your situation. And we're trying to figure out what is actually, it seems simple on the outside, but it's a complicated internal system and process. And it's an accountability measure for us that we have to measure up to also for, from a practical perspective in terms of just making sure kids are attending and from a safety perspective, but also um, it's something that we're, we are required to attend to. And so it's, it, it is, we're like reinventing all these systems. Again, I keep using the analogies, but um, I, 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 I just want you to know you're definitely not alone in that. We're all trying oh, to figure that out. I out. certainly appreciate that. I, I thought I have, uh, have always had two kids in two different buildings. And this year I have two kids in the same building and I thought it would make my life easier, but it's actually more complicated sometimes when I get emails and I'm not sure which child it's referring to, you know, or uh, I get an email saying, you know, your English class. And I'm like, who is English class? Yep. Yep. I hear you for sure. Thank you. Um, there's a, let's see here. Uh, there was a question about clubs and activities being fully remote or hybrid. Uh, I'd say a little bit of both. So what we're asking club advisors to do is meet remotely as much as possible, just feeling as though that's a safer option, but they do have the option to meet in person um, following, you know, all the same strict guidelines that they would be during the day. And so uh, they're, they are putting plans together for that and then communicating that. Uh, but they'll generally try to re, um, meet remotely if they can do that. 
So uh, a good question. Um, anybody like to unmute their microphone and jump into the conversation? So there is a question uh, that's been asked about cases rising and guidelines on the website about what the process is when there's a potential exposure and what the protocols are. Let me speak to this just in general terms and then ask any of my colleagues to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But you know, we've, we've sent out materials provided to us by a variety of agencies, et cetera. I think it, you know, I take every opportunity to say this and want to point out again that the Monroe County Department of Public Health has been extraordinarily helpful and supportive. Generally speaking, um, what happens right now is if, you know, if a child reports symptoms or their family reports symptoms in the screener, we follow up directly with that family and recommend that they get tested and speak with their physician um, et cetera, and then follow that person. And there's a, a protocol around that. This question was specific though to the contact issue. The contact issue for us is not one that we determine who, who to call. The contact tracer contacts us and says, this is the child we've, or the adult. We've interviewed the child or the adult. And these are the places they were, the times when they didn't have a mask on, the potential exposures help us figure out then who could possibly have been exposed. And then at that point, we provide that information to them, and then they are contacted by public health officials uh, regarding being a potential contact and informed as to what they are supposed to do. Testing, doctor, stay home, here's how long you're quarantined for, et cetera. We receive then that information every single day that says, here's the name of the person and here's the time frame. They're out from this day until this day. Um, and then and we'll have follow-up questions and they're very, very responsive to our follow-up questions. Well, you know what? This child had this particular issue. Do you know about this? They may have gone here. They may have done this. We're just wondering, what if they were around this? This teacher happens to work closely with that child and is concerned. And they've been great about walking us through that and determining whether or not anybody else was a potential contact. Um, we will... Uh, you know, put any other information that we get, but all of the guidelines that we have and that we have available for anybody are posted on the website under the COVID-19 tab. Uh, but certainly if there's specific questions around that, happy to do that now or um, discuss that, uh, you know, with this person individually if they want to reach out to, happy to do that. Any other questions? Anybody want to jump into the conversation? I'm going to take a look at the Facebook uh, comments. There's one from Francine Barnett. I would like to publicly say how amazing my son's teachers are this year. They are going above and beyond to connect with the students and provide meaningful and highly effective instruction. Kudos to all of them. Well, thanks very much for sharing that also, uh, Francine. I think that's great, great to hear, and we'll certainly pass that along as well. Um, that is the last uh, comment that I see, the last uh, question there is there is one just came into the chat when kids are not allowed to go to school being sick how do they get the lessons this is no different than in the past when children were sick and we would be providing materials um, it's independent work if there's asynchronous materials kids can connect to that's great they can obviously still connect on the wednesday um, but when they're not allowed to go to school we're handling that as we would any other illness and we've handled long-term illnesses in school you know for many many years in terms of making sure kids remain caught up and the teacher catches up with them and their family to provide that work. Okay, question. I'm curious about how the one positive case only had four contacts that had to quarantine. What is the criteria for being considered a contact? Great question. So maybe this gets at a little bit more of the protocol question uh, with a scenario. Uh, First, the, um, I will say as not a public health official, and, and as I tell my kids, not a real doctor, I want to make sure I don't get the definitions wrong or say it the wrong way. My, our general understanding of this is these are close contacts that we're talking about. So in other words, the, the situation with the one case in school, close contact was because there was no masking in an eating situation. Although there was distancing, there wasn't masking. 
And for the amount of time that they were together unmasked eating, they were considered a close contact. But students that were in classes together or adults that were together with the positive case were distanced and masked. And it was determined because of that, that they did not need to um, have anybody else quarantined as a result of that positive case. So hopefully that gives people a better sense of how that's being determined. Yet again, I will tell you, that's not a decision that we make. We provide information and then the public health officials um, uh, make that determination. And thanks Dr. Mendoza for chiming in on that. The real doctor in the house who can answer that question uh, very, very well, thank you. Any other uh, questions, comments, anything else you would like us to know or think about or be considering? Eleanor, I saw you unmuted. Yes, I have one really quick question for my daughter, which is truly selfish for her. When is the auditorium going to be done? <laughs> or at least what is an update or progress on it? So we are still scheduled for that to be done mid-November. You know, we, we certainly have said that to you before. They've made a tremendous amount of progress. Um, I don't know if you have a new date. Tom's here. I think Rob Luce is also on. Uh, has there been any change to the completion date? We did it. We had to take half a step back because of one part of the process. Uh, so I'm not sure. Well, we've had to take about 47 steps backwards, but most recently one part of the process. Uh, and I see Mr. Struzik's up there too, chuckling. So does anybody else have a date past mid-November that is more accurate? So we actually, several of us took a tour of all of the facilities today and we were in the auditorium and they're actually putting the seats in they're drilling the floor they're bolting the seats down so that is in progress um but there's still you know a number of things to do in the entryway and uh we do have a couple of issues on the on the balcony that we're working through but they're still telling me because i asked them and my, i know mike you weren't there today but you were there on many other days i asked them point blank so is our date still mid-november um, I'm going to go with more before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Not mid. <laughs> and we'll let you know. Let's put it this way. We're a lot closer than we've ever been before. No, the seats are actually being bolted down. So that, that's been nice to see. Big, big step. What, what we've seen so far looks absolutely beautiful. So we're very happy about that, too. I see uh, a question about proms and spring activities yes any anything on proms any thoughts about proms i don't know any thoughts about proms dr Marino? no i <laughs> <laughs> i mean we, we want to have them asked about the last year senior prom by somebody who lives under my roof occasionally so uh no i i i think the 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 reality is folks we're we're in this for the long haul right now and everything is on hold and we're having to make adjustments and think outside the box for that. And unfortunately, that means a lot of the things that our kids would be looking forward to are, are likely continuing to be in jeopardy. So that's that's what we know now. And I think we should keep preparing ourselves uh, for that. Somebody's asking here, as the holidays approach and uh, families travel beyond New York State, understanding quarantine will be implemented. Any negative impacts from BHS perspective for the students knowing they are responsible to keep up with studies? You know, First of all, I think that yes, people will have to travel and people will have to quarantine and take responsibility for that. You know, um, we won't do anything though to penalize anybody. We wanna do everything we can to encourage people to comply fully with public health guidelines. So not create any barriers to that whatsoever. Um, you know, if people choose to do that and that's their family's choice to, to do, Nobody says people can't travel. They just say they need to quarantine if they do that. And we'll be respectful of that and supportive of that um, and make sure that we, we treat that similar to if somebody had to quarantine because they were a contact in some way where we're making sure people get the work and the instruction uh, and, and don't fall behind. Um, Eleanor, you're very welcome. Uh, Tricia, so if we do get a safe vaccine, we can assume kids... Uh, will not go back to school five days a week this school year. So I, you know, I feel like it's, it's, that's multiple questions in one that I can't answer. Um, one, 
I I think probably the uh, Tricia might be saying, and feel free if you want to unmute yourself. If we don't get a safe vaccine, we can assume kids will not go back to school five days a week this school year. You know, I I, I want to make sure that I'm not making any announcements that people walk off of this saying he said we're not going back to school. But I'm also not going to be disingenuous with you and and run away from that. I will tell you that I see this being a longer term. Uh, situation and and mentally that's what I've prepared myself for, and that we're thinking a lot about internally, without any ability to make any kind of announcement, without any ability to tell you that it's for the whole year, that it's a, there is no conversation happening about that. I was asked the other day um, with the new parents on Monday night by a family about you know any conversation about coming back to school, and my response was the conversation I had on a call with the commissioner's office and the commissioner herself on Monday was entirely about transition to all remote. The um, zones that have been talked about in the state and set up relative to testing yellow, orange, red zones and how people are bracing for what is a potential spike in cases, zero conversation about reopening, all conversations about being prepared that it actually becomes more restrictive for us. So. Um, just to give you a sense of the dialogue, it's not a secret. I think we're seeing that all over the place. Um, I don't have, again, any announcement, any deadlines, any time frame, any prognostication. Um, but that's what I'm preparing myself for and thinking about organizationally about how we uh, uh, position ourselves to, to be prepared for the long haul. Any other questions, thoughts, comments, anything we haven't answered? All right. Well, everybody, people, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, thanks very much for coming. We really appreciate you spending the time with us, giving us the feedback. Keep talking to us. Keep communicating. We want to continue to grow and improve uh, what we're doing. And uh, we appreciate your patience. We appreciate all our staff has done to make this a meaningful experience and to do so well, but also for all of you and being our partners in that. And uh, we just look forward to continuing to grow and to work carefully with you. Stay masked, stay distanced, stay healthy, stay well and take care. Thank you very much. This has been a special presentation from Brighton High School.